Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part three of my Python 2.7 tutorial. Today, I'm going to cover dictionaries, how to use the print function, and how to use strings. If you didn't see the previous tutorial, you should definitely watch it. Otherwise, you may be very confused, and I have a link here to it above. In a previous tutorial, I talked about lists and tuples. Well, there is another array type or sequence type inside of Python, and it is called a dictionary. With dictionaries, how they differ from tuples and lists is that you can reference individual elements inside of tuples and lists by requesting their specific index number. Well, dictionaries don't have index numbers. They instead have what we refer to as keys. So the key would be age, and then the actual value associated with said key would be 35 on, in my circumstances. And you can see here, and I'm going to show you some examples using this very specific dictionary I have here on the screen right here in a second. Okay, so how do you create a dictionary? Well, I'm going to create a variable called D-I-C-T-E-X, and this is just an arbitrary name I'm making up, and this is going to be the name for my dictionary. I started off with this rounded bracket, then I define my key, just like that, followed by a colon, and the number or value I want associated with that key. I'm going to do the same thing here for height like you saw previously, colon, and then I'm going to actually put height inside of quotes, and then I'm going to create a final one. I'm going to call it weight, colon, and I'm going to assign that the value of 165. Okay, there I just created myself a dictionary. Now, like tuples, dictionary types are immutable. That means once you create them, you cannot come in here and change these values. You can delete them, and I'm going to show you that in a second. Or you could completely overwrite them. Now, if I want to print the screen, you can see right here, there's the dictionary that you just created. And if I want to get the value that is associated with a said key, I can do that quite easily. Just put in that, followed by git which is a function, and then type in the key I'm looking for. And you can see it printed out the value associated with that. And if I want to print out the keys and the values, I use the function called items, or method, whatever you want to call it. Method functions, to me it's the same thing. You can see here with that outputted here on the screen. And if you want just the values to come out, you just use the values method. And you can see it printed out just those values and not the key. Now, if you wanted to actually delete a value from this dictionary, you can do that, but you cannot put in any new ones. And how you would do this is by using the pop function or method and pass along the key that you'd like to delete. And you can see here it deleted height out, but it left age and weight. And that's dictionaries. That's pretty much what you do with them. I'm going to show you some really cool things you can do in upcoming examples with dictionaries. But at this point in time, that is the basics of how dictionaries work inside of Python. Now I'm going to get into how to manipulate the values in, with the print function. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to create a string called str name. I'm going to give it the value Bob. I'm going to create a float represented by age, sex, meaning male an integer, which is just a value that doesn't have a decimal place, represent how many kids he has, and a boolean, which only has the value of true or false, and give it the value of true. Now, why did I do that? You saw previously how to use the print function to print things out to the screen. So let's say my name is comma, and if I run that, see my name is Bob pops out here on the screen. Actually, since I put this comma in here, I didn't have to put that additional space. If, however, I would have put a plus sign, would have had to. But what happens if you want to take one of these values and implant it so you don't have to continually keep putting strings and wrapping things around and so forth and so on. I'm going to show you that right now. So with the print function, if you want a string to be placed inside of these quotes, which will then be sent to the screen, you have to put a percentage sign followed by the letter S. That represents a string that is going to be transported there. Then, if you would like to do the same thing with floats, again, percentage sign, followed by F, years, old, and then put your last quote. Then you want to put another percentage sign, followed by these rounded off braces, and you want to put in the, the different variables that you want transported into those positions you just defined. So this value here is going to be put right here, and this value here is going to be put right here. You can see that if I run it. Bob is 35.0 years old, whatever that works out to be. You can see that, that it did put those values in there. However, it put some sort of weird sort of numbers inside of there as well. If you would want this to be rounded off to one 
integer. It's real simple. You just put a point in here followed by the number one and you can see that it rounded it off to 35.4 years old. Let's go and print out some of these other guys. And you can see here I'm going to cover all the different common things that you would want to print using the print function. If you wanted to print an individual character, percentage sign, C again, and another percentage sign, and the name of the variable associated with it. And you can see that it, that printed out on screen as well. And I'm going to show you the remaining common values. D or I, if you want to place a integer inside of here. I want to use a single quote here, so I'm going to backslash it. And I'm going to place a percentage sign followed by S to place a Boolean in here. Close that off, another percentage sign, and kids all married. And you can see here, printed all that out there and put all the information in the proper places. So that's some of the different ways you can transport information of different types of variables inside of the print function. Let's go over here. You could also define a couple other different things. Let's say I want to use the pi function here. So I want to import the math library so I have access to pi. And I'm going to jump down here. And let's say I want to print to the screen pi with 15 decimal places of accuracy. One, one five, F, close that off, math.pi, print to screen, and it prints it out 15 points of accuracy. Let's say that I also, do, these are just other different ways you can mess around with precision and so forth. I want to guarantee there is a total of 20 numbers that show up. I just come in here, delete that, put 20. So this isn't decimal places, this is total numbers. And what it does by default is it makes space, additional space here to make up for those 20 digits that you are recommend or that you are requesting. Now if I come in here, put one five in here, you can see that it moved over, so it's left justified. If I wanted it to be right justified, meaning all the additional space should show up on the right side of that, let's say that I do something like print, I'd put this negative sign in here, and that will force it to make space on the right side instead of the left side. Close that off. And you can see here it put that additional space that I recommended in there. And let's say I want to allow the user of my program to be able to define the precision of pi, create a variable called precision pi. And the int function is going to convert the string that's passed back by the function raw input into an integer. So that's what I'm doing here. And then and I'm going to use this star symbol here to take this value right here and define the precision we're looking for decimal wise in regards to how we're going to print pi to the screen. And again, percentage sign. And here you have to define the number of decimal places that goes in the star area. And then you have to define the value that represents the float. And then it says how precise should pi be? And let's say I say 30 and it prints it out to the screen, 30 decimal places of accuracy. So the star is going to represent precision, the number of decimal places, and pi, of course, represents the number itself. So there's a whole bunch of different ways, pretty much all the different ways, to use the print function inside of Python. And now I'm going to go into strings. I'm going to create a value called big string. I actually covered some different ways to combine strings, like for example, if I would put this here, this would concatenate both of these strings or join them together and then assign them to big string, as I previously had talked about. But let's say I wanted to print a screen from the first index, or this letter right here, E. Remember this is 0, 1, 2. That's how these are all sequenced out. If I wanted to print from here until the 20th character, Every other character that appears there, I can do that with strings, just like I can do them with lists and all these other different sequence types you saw previously. And you can see it prints every other letter from index 1 through 20 here onto the screen. Sometimes it's a space, and that's why you see that there. I could also use the find function to find the index value of the string that I pass to the find function. So let's say I'm looking for the string called string. Now I want to print that to screen. You can see. 15. So 15 right here. This is going to represent the first location of this value string right there. Or let's say I want to count the number of total E's in the string called big string. So that count and what I want to count. Of course put the rounded braces and there's four total E's in a string. If you go up there and count them, sure enough you're going to find out that I'm right. You can also define with the count function, let's just copy it, where you want to begin counting. So I just come in here, if I want to start counting after the fourth index, do that. It's going to miss these first two E's and print that out the screen. And you could also define a range. 
So let's say I want to go from here to the 20th character. And you can see it actually doesn't make it to this E or this E. So there's different ways to use the find and count function. And from the previous tutorial, you probably remember you doing this. I'm going to show you how to turn a string into a tuple using the tuple function and then assigning it to copy string. And you see it broke every single letter and space and put it into individual boxes and side of the tuple. And if you want to turn a tuple back into a string, this stuff is actually useful. It's like you do this often. Just put a single quote, two single quotes, join, and then copy, str. And it'll convert this tuple back into its string. And of course, you could have this and then reassign it to another string variable type here. So if we did uh, copy two, I don't know then it's going to actually turn this tuple back into a string and then assign the value of that string to the variable type copy to. You could also do some other kind of weird things with this join function. See, the reason why there's nothing here is I defined that I didn't want anything to go between these individual letters whenever this tuple was turned into a string. What happens if I define that I want to put, say, a comma and a space? It does just that. And if you play with this a little bit, you start to see how useful a lot of these different functions are and how quickly you can change multiple different things inside of Python. Like I can turn this string right here into all lowercase letters. And I'm not going over every single method that's available because there's so many, but you can see it automatically turned everything into lowercase. It could also turn everything into uppercase, just that simple. Or I could come in here and replace individual words with other words using the replace function. So, say I want to say replace long with a string small. Boom. Now instead of saying a long string, it says a small string. Using the split function, I can actually break up all the different letters. And it broke everything up and stuck them into a list and discarded all of the individual spaces, which allows me to easily go in here. You use this a lot for scrubbing websites. And as the last example, let's say I have a string that has a lot of random white space and I want to eliminate that white space. No problem. Strip function will take it off of there. As you can see, it got rid of all the white space. So hope you found this tutorial very useful. Leave any questions or comments below, and until next time.